So, Temple of Love. Thank you, Lectures by Bhaktivedanta Sadhu Maharaj. Uh, so, for all translators, we will just go through text slowly. Yes, yeah, soaking our souls in the words of Guru Dev. So, if you have books, we can just read through if you have translations in your languages. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The power of love. So we will begin from the beginning. <laughs> the power of love. Knowingly or unknowingly, everyone is in search for eternal love oh. from the beginning. Oh, from beginning? More in beginning. More, beginning. More, More beginning. beginning. Okay. The beginning of the beginning. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. First, there was light. <laughs> we know that we are soul and we have one nature to love. Love is coming from heart. <coughs> heart gives us feelings and feelings give us relation. If anyone uh, would like to uh, yeah, comment, add some that comes from the heart, please, rather, rather, welcome, more than welcome, most welcome. <clears throat> At the present moment, we are so material, so we use this desire for love with my conditioning, with my senses. This is not the world of love. What is this world? Our agenda is to be in goodness, but goodness is still a material concept. Regardless of all religion, all religions, races, or gender, it is the deepest desire of all beings to experience unconditional love. That eternal unconditional love comes at the platform of 
pure goodness. Vishuddha Sattva. from the soul. To connect in divine love. <clears throat> in this love, we can grow, we can nourish. Radhe Radhe Anaka. Radhe. Uh, so I like to go a little deeper in that what you just read, if you agree with me. Sure. <coughs> that, uh, all devotees. Thank you. I, th I think this is a very important point that we uh, understand these two meanings of what is in the material and what is eternal and what is unconditioned and what is conditioned. And Gurdiv here gives a nice explanation and I like to read again this last verse. That eternal unconditioned love comes from the platform of pure goodness from the soul. This Vishuddha Sattva to connect in divine love. So that means that this unconditioned love connect us to the divine. And this is an explanation of uh, one a way or uh, a path or uh, some. Uh, why is it so needed? A wire uh. between the material and the eternal, the temporary and eternal abode. You know? Unconditioned love. It's like this, what Suniti say, a wire between connection, between these two abodes mm. that, uh, that needs to understand that we have a direct connection even in, the, uh, in this material body, you know, to the divine by unconditioned love. So the connection is there, and uh, by practicing this, what well, is Gurudev teaching, love in action, we open this, uh, this line, what is already there. And uh, so because on, on this way, we, we get a direct relation to the spiritual abode. And this is uh, uh, a deep meaning in that, what, what you just read, Andaka. Wow. Mm. And it's uh, so beautiful that we understand that we connect by this practicing of, uh, of this love, unconditional love, that we actually connect with the spiritual abode. So, this is the beauty of the teaching of Gurudev, that we understand this way. He is the navigator who is showing this way, and we only have to follow this. And if we understand this, it is everything there, because the pure goodness is, comes from the soul, and so uh, if we understand that we are a soul, pure goodness is there. Uh, we have to to give them life, and uh, in this way, we will connect it to the spiritual abode. Radhe Radhe, that's what I like to say for this last verse. Thank you.
Mm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm. I'm, we are very happy to see your face, just to see your face. <laughs> we, 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 are, we are connected. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so I want to a little bit comment, maybe. So this, so this say, uh, unconditional. So opposite word is condition. So let us think this conditioned and unconditioned. <laughs> so condition means we say if if you give me something, okay, I also give you. If you don't do something, I stop doing. So, if we mention if then condition, unconditioned, we don't say anything. Just I want to give you, I want to love you, I want to serve you. But in this material world, if you give me such and such money, or if you give something, reward, I will do. Or if you angry with me, then I don't do. I don't like you. <laughs> but unconditioned, you are angry, you are happy. I want to serve you. I want to please you. So, unconditional love is give and give and give freely. Conditional love is give, give, give. Please give me love. Please give me money. Please give me something. Right, Jainanda. And we have two different goals, what you explained just now. There is one goal is in the material and one goal is in the spiritual. If we have a spiritual goal, that means the service itself, then it's unconditioned because our goal is the service. And uh, in the material meaning, there is something, another goal behind that. We like to give, uh, uh, get something, gold or, or money or uh, health or whatever. And in the, in the service, there is only the service. There is nothing else than the service. This is the fulfilling of all our desires. So the service itself is our condition in the spiritual meaning, right? Yes. So Ananta Baba say, love means service. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, sometimes we say, oh, I love you, I love you, but I don't want to serve you. <laughs> Is this not I love you when <laughs> yeah if you give me I love you <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, you make me happy happy yeah but uh, love means you know love means I want to serve you I want to please you that's it yeah yeah that's it so therefore Guru Dev say love in action means, means service so our Atma's soul's nature is to serve. But the problem is to whom we should give service. Mm. That is, we don't know. So we are thinking, oh, I want to serve this material body, my body. Oh, I want to serve my, my family member. I want to serve my material boss. That's also okay. But uh, 
if we serve material platform, then our love may be material platform. Mm. So, but if we think we are spirit soul, and everybody has spirit soul, everybody relate with supreme soul, Radha Mohan, then we are everybody, we are brothers and sisters. Then naturally, okay, I want to serve my brother and sister to please my father, my, my super soul, my Ishka Deva. Then our service, even family member and uh, my company's boss or, you know, co-worker or our neighbors, that service become more spiritual. Rade, rade. <laughs> So, okay, we continue reading. In this divine love, we can grow and we can nourish because it is divine love. Then, the divine can go to the divine in a divine relationship. She gives pleasure to the Lord. This pleasure potency gives mercy to all of us living beings. So this is Guru Dev say, divine love is female, female. Guru Dev means say, see. So divine love, is like mother. Mother love every children. If mother loves someone who is even bad ch child or some defect or some kind of, you know, mm. uh, what is it? Is material vision not good child? Still mother loves the child. Mm. This also mentioned, she gives pleasure to the Lord. So give pleasure means she can do seva to the Lord. So another Baba say, love means service. From service, we can give pleasure to our object, our Ishta Deva. So this is very interesting. This divine love is she. Like motherly nature. And very kind and very soft, magnificent nature. and give pleasure to the Lord. Give pleasure to anybody who want to connect to her. So this is Guru Dev explained very nicely. Mm. Yes. 
So once again, and this divine love is the inner potency of the Savior. She gives pleasure to the Lord and this pleasure potency gives mercy to all of us living beings. Very beautiful. Then question, Goranga Sundar, could you explain what is a mercy? So this say uh, this pleasure giving pleasure potency gives mercy to all living beings. Then question may arise. So what is a mercy? So Goranga Sundara, could you explain what is a mercy? Oh, come say, sorry, sorry, Gora Sundara. Oh, yes, Goranga Sundara also is expert in loving relationship. But I can, I can uh, hmm. say something in this because. No. We can see last uh, time. Du musst das aus, much. Last time when we was in uh, with Guru Dev, we we spoke about the topic of to be in Vrindavan. <coughs> and if we see the inhabitants of Vrindavan, this is not a shelter. So. Yes. <coughs> um, they are all in a loving relationship right mm. to krishna x no? they all this whole branch Vrinda, who is leading this they this this goal of the whole uh, dam is to give love to the lord Mm. And if we go to the source of love, then we always will reach our Swamani. And not only in Vrindavan, for example, for Mother Yashoda, Nanda Baba, friends, Gopas, Gopis, all everybody's goal is to give love to krishna because even for the maid servants we love our swamini right but swamini's love is to krishna and to all living beings beings she loves and she spent love to everybody, and not only in in the uh, spiritual abode of Vrindavan. Her love is also in the material world. What you explain, Jayananda? No? Motherly love we can also find here in the material world. And if we go back to the source of even this love, if it is a pure love, then we always find our Swamini as the source of this love. And so this is in our hearts, if, if this love is growing in our hearts in form of uh, feelings and relationship, then Swamini automatically uh, take a, a part or, or uh, a room uh, in our heart. Hmm. <clears throat> and then we can say we are really a servant of her when we give her space in our hearts. So, and because of this, we understand this, what, what Anaka just read again. In this love, Anaka said, we can grow and nourish. It's true. Because it is divine love. So that means unconditioned. And in this we can grow. We find everything that what we are looking for in this material world and cannot find. 
this happiness we can find in this in this love no in this divine love then our soul is happy and reach the goal is there where what we are looking for then the divine can go to the divine in a divine relationship so that means our unconditional love this is meaning of divine unconditional love will find this uh uh relationship no what good if explain in the form of the relationship of of our swamini in our case no so that means the divine can go to the divine in a divine relationship so beautiful explained from gurudev right mm, yes it's most beautiful in the in the in the simple uh, form to understand this in a nice way <laughs> and this divine love is the inner potency of the savior so it's clear that no? this divine love actually uh is founded in our swamini and she is the inner potency of krishna right yes so good it is so deep here in this we can she gives pleasure to the lord krishna needs his inner potency to be happy without her she is not he is not happy and this pleasure potency his inner potency gives mercy to all living beings so that not only in the spiritual abode also to us no mm. even in the sadaka deya not only in the eternal body and so this is uh, only a few words but so beautiful explained so i understood so, what you say this mercy means to 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 connect our relationship with our ishta dev and this divine di divine love and then then all suffering all misery automatically go that's it so this is this relationship with our divine love and divine lord is is so important that's uh, you you want to say huh yes it's this is uh, uh, this this deep meaning in that in this verses we just read is unconditional love in relationship hmm and it becomes divine when this love is unconditioned when mm. it's not unconditioned then it's not divine then it's material mm. no mm. that to understand no? how how deep this this explanation of gurudev is mm. if we understand this then we surely will uh, uh, uh take shelter in this relationship to our swami you know hmm then our so, love becomes divine yes so we have to be spiritual platform right hmm and say i want to go little deeper so our material platform material consciousness we are influenced by tamas rajas and sattva gunas here guru they mention in in goodness mm -hmm. so but the spiritual consciousness here guru they have not mentioned is shuddha sattva and also vishuddha sattva 
So Shuddha Sattva means just we thinking we are spirit soul. But here Gurudev says Vishuddha Sattva. So Vishuddha Sattva means spiritual body. Because to, 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 to have relationship, we need body, we need personality. So if we say we are light, we are spirit soul, it's not enough to get to, to, to establish relationship with the divine love and divine Lord. Never. So, yeah, Gurudev said, too. yeah, so we need, Gurudev has spiritual, no, uh, say, divine love has spiritual body, divine savior, divine lord has spiritual body, then soul has to have a spiritual body. Yes. And at that time, we may have a spiritual relationship. If we don't have a body, then we are nobody. Nobody, yeah, <laughs> very nice. And who likes to love a nobody? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Only nobody likes to love nobody. <laughs> nobody. <laughs> but we are not nobodies. We are maidservants, and so we, uh, we are in the body of a maidservant. And in this case, we grow in the feelings of a maidservant. And this is our goal. And in this way, we become, uh, we are in a, we laugh unconditioned mm. to oh. our Swamini, no? In the body. Mm. Thank you. Yes, sure. sure. Radhe Radhe, Kora Sundara Ji, Dandabad Kishori. Kishori, Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Yeah, actually, at this point that I feel, which body we have, object of love change. If we have material body, we love object of material. Mm -hmm. And if we have spiritual body, <clears throat> Object love should be mm -hmm. spiritual. Mm -hmm. Just it rather rather. Right, Kishori, but I like to say but <laughs> <laughs> we we heard from Gurudev that we are that there is a possibility even in the Sadakadeya if we go with our mind, if we use our mind properly. And we meditate on that, what is Raghunathas written down, Rupa Goswami, Nahotam Das. Then actually, even in the material body, we will get a connection to the spiritual. By the, by the useful meaning of the mind. When we use the mind properly, then we can go very deep in this meditation, and then we are, I would say, in a modern uh, way, online. Mm -hmm. We can go online mm -hmm. and connect ourselves in the meditation as a manjari to the spiritual abode, even we are in this material body. And the example is Raghunath Das, is Rupa Goswami and is also Nahotam Das. If you, if you read their books, we can see how much they are, even in the Sadak Deya, they can switch by the help of the mind in this spiritual abode and jump by, by a helpful mind in their spiritual form. Right, Jainanda? Yes. It's possible, no? Yes, possible. 
So no need to wait. Uh, No need to wait for the changing of a body. That means we can start just now. By accepting the scriptures, what we are reading, and accepting the examples of Raghunathas, Rupa Goswami, and also Narottam Das. And maybe also others. But this is, these are the main books we are reading, right? And no, for sure, uh, um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Okay. okay. Radhe Radhe. Thank you. So we continue reading. <clears throat> Selfless love seems rare to experience in this earthly world full of limitations, judgments. Still, our soul yearns for it because love is God. And God is love. <clears throat> to be connected in this simple truth is the easiest way to transform any human crisis to live a life of love is the answer to all questions and the deepest source of happiness and satisfaction. Mm. Andaka. Mm. How is it possible to live a life of love? I think as long as we are identified with the material body, it's not possible to live a life of love. Because by the identification of a temporary body, we always fight with the circumstances in this material world. And we are identified with, uh, with all these circumstances. Many enemies will come and we will uh, identify ourselves as uh, left side and uh, enemies on right side and uh, we have to uh, act somehow. No? So I feel that a life of love or a, lo a life in love is only possible when we overcome this false ego with the material body and enter in the spiritual identification in our case as a manjari then we get a new view to this 
to all living beings. Right? A new view is coming. We, we see from the eyes of a Manjari to this earth and their problems. And we are continuously in love. And in our case, love in action. Eh? So as long as we are identified with the material, we cannot live a life in love. <laughs> no? Right? Ich glaube, die hören mich nicht mehr, gell? Can you listen me? Yes, we can hear you, but I think Vrindavan lost the connection. Oh. Wir hören dich aber. Oh, so what to do now? Continue, very beautiful. Kishori. <laughs> yes. Yes, if we like to be in love, we have to use a body what is made actually of love. We have to identify ourselves as a part of the uh, of this love movement and the l love movement is our love. swamini's movement <laughs> face to face face to face mm. are you back yeah yeah, yeah we're, we're back, back. We're back. <laughs> i'm so sorry i don't know what what was uh, my the last i i was telling to you <laughs> <laughs> I was, I tried to explain that in the material identification, it's not possible to live a life of love because we see some, uh, uh, some enemies in others or like this or that. We are identified as a Ukrainian or as a Russian, so we have enemies, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's true. No? Or even, uh, it's not so far away that even the West Germans and the East Germans, they, uh, they thought that they are enemies, right? Yeah. And um, so it's, it's really not possible to live a life of love in the material identification. But if we really change our identification in the spiritual, in our case, in a, in a, in a form of a manjari, we can see a very different, because we are taking part of the love movement of Srimati Radhika. Suniti is whispering, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true, sure. This is also our movement, what is uh, given by Chaitanya, no? that we could, can take part of the, uh, of the uh, family of Radhika. We are very close to her, and if we are identified, as more as we are identified with this, even in the material body. But if we are identified with, as a manjari, we can see the world from the eyes of a manjari. And that means from the eyes of love. And then we can live a life of love. True? Is it true? Yes. <laughs> now you are back. This is the beauty of Gurudev's teaching and of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teaching, of the teaching of Raghunathas and all, all our parampara. That we can see the world from the eyes of love and live a life of love. Radhe, Radhe. Mm. Thank you.
To live a life of love is the answer to all questions and the deepest source of happiness and satisfaction. Where love is we will grow beyond all expectations love creates the greatest miracles and heals the deepest wounds Love only seeks the happiness of the beloved. We will unite in this love because love has nothing to take but all to give love only seeks the happiness of the beloved mm. and in this way as Manjaris, we can see the world that we only seek the happiness of our beloved, of Swamini. And we can see with these eyes every living being and even the non moving things from the eyes. Of a, of a maid servant, and we know when we see in every everybody and uh, all beings that there is Krishna, and we know that our Swamini loves so much Krishna, automatically. We like to make them happy because of our identification as a maid servant of Swamini. <laughs> it's beautiful, no? Beautiful. This explanation of Guru Dev. Love only seeks the happiness of the beloved. Wow. So Swamini always likes to make Krishna happy, and in this way, we are uh, only we are fully identified as a part of her, uh, a servant of her. So we also like to make everybody happy in this way. Yeah, and also, Gorang, you know, Gorasundaraji, this Gurudev say, love is beyond the expectation. Wow, yeah. Yeah, material world, you know, always expect something, you know. And yeah. expect something, you know, please give me something. Yeah. Also from between friends. Between the friends, between parents, and, you know. Relation. Relation. But, oh, please give me, you know, I need money, you know, I need to buy car, you know. And this is the second. <laughs> second. And also, this also, love means want to give. Yeah. Not to take. Love yeah. want to give. Love no expectation. 
Love is just no. please others, please my beloved. This is very beautiful. I agree. So, yeah. I just want to say, we it's yes. important to make a distinction oh. between condition and hmm. reciprocation. Uh -huh. You see? Uh -huh. So reciprocation is a beautiful thing, right? Wow. So we have to make a distinction. So some people can be confused, right? Reciprocation, we're getting and we're giving. We want to give. Right, if we receive, so this is a natural, this is a beautiful thing, it's a, a good expression of love. But we can't, yeah. we shouldn't confuse this with condition, you mm. see. Because if there's a tinge, if there's a tinge of material consciousness, mm. this, this concept of practice of condition, give and take, we call in Latin, we say quid pro quo, you know, this mm. will enter, this will take away, this will take us down, you see. Yeah, just, Amazon. Just we say Amazon. Huh? Amazon. Amazon. Guru Dev always say Amazon. What? Why, Amazon. What is? What is meaning Amazon. of this? We, you know this platform, uh, Amazon. Click and order. Click and order. <laughs> so, <laughs> one thing I like to also uh, speak about goodness. And this unconditional love. Goodness is a nice thing. Um, but for this, you don't need any relationship or uh, like this, no? or loving relationship. You don't need this. In goodness, you can save the world. Uh, for example, we like to, to uh, build a hospital. This is goodness in this world. Make this world better somehow. Become vegan. This is uh, all this uh, understanding of goodness. But uh, Jainanda, how do you explain? We have to go beyond beyond this this meaning of goodness. This is nothing uh, in a relationship to Krishna or Swamini. And how you say this? Uh, uh, Sattva, what is what is beyond this? This sattva is Sutta sattva. Yeah. No. So this is only to cross a, a small border to go in goodness, because then the circumstances becomes better for the spiritual growing. Mm. But there is not meaning that you are uh, uh, in a relationship or whatever. But the, the circumstances becomes better. And far beyond this, we go in a relationship, in a steady relationship to grow our spiritual body and to grow our bath, our special bath, what we need. And also in this, if we know Swamini is the source of love. She is also the source of bath. All bath creating our uh, origin in our Swamini because of this her name is Mahabhav. It all comes from her. So this is the meaning also or the, the differences. Uh, what is the meaning of goodness? And uh, this is, huh? Pure goodness. And pure goodness, no? Mm. Right? Yes. And also, Good. I. Oh. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't okay. cannot. And also, you know, how to beyond the expectation and, uh, you know, or the kind of giving or. Like uh, Guru Dev said, we become like child. Yeah. But uh, if, you know, child, we are very straightforward, you know, I want this. And, you know, if we're going to get something, we cry. No, I need to do this one, you know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, getting older, we, we learn to, to, you know, a kind of two face. Yeah, to Inside become more something clever. Outside. Yeah, double standard, you know. <laughs> Cleverness. I yeah, cleverness or a kind of duplicity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, 
But uh, this kind of simplicity also Gurudev's teaching, you know, like child. Yes, because um, uh, actually when we see what is our age, as a Manjari, what is the age of Manjaris? They are uh, not uh, 34 or uh, uh, even 20. Uh, they are not even 15. They are 11 and something. That means they are very childish. Children. Yeah. But clever, no? Very clever. <laughs> yes. And this is, a, I always uh, make this example of Jesus. It is also a Christian teaching. He said, and he understood himself as a, a son of the Father. And he said, to reach the Father, we have to become a child. Mm. No? So it's, uh, we have many parallels, many parallels in, in this that we can say, okay, Jesus' teaching is very close. And also service is his teaching. That means bhakti. So we can say he teach bhakti in his own way. No? Right? Mm -hmm. So and after, there was one, only a small example, there was one disciple of him asking, Oh, Master, what do you think? Who is the best of all your disciples? And uh, Jesus replied, he said, yes, who like to be the best of all, he has to become the servant of all. Then he is the best. That is bhakti. Service. <laughs> Beautiful, no? Beautiful. Yeah. Gurudev teaching also the same. Yeah. He said, yeah. Guru means servant of all. True, true. You know, Gurudev said, no, you know, because usually ordinary Guru eat first. But Gurudev, <laughs> yes. Gurudev eat yeah. first. <laughs> then, then say, you know, Guru means Every, everybody servant. Wow. It's this beautiful example he is giving by, by Prashadam. You're true. Yeah. Every day you can see this. Yeah. <laughs> so you see, when the, there is no higher position than that of a Manjari. Oh, I will not say higher. There is no other position or relationship to the divine couple that is more close to them than the maidservants, right? Yes. They even, they, they, they are not only in the office, they are not only in the kitchen, like Mother Yashoda or other or friends in the office, Mother Yashoda in the kitchen and so on, but they are so close that they even entered the uh, sleeping room mm -hmm. without any shyness. So, and if these highest personalities, even if they are children, are uh, seeing themselves as the servant of all, as a servant, then we have to follow them if we like to be like them. We have to become also the servant of all. And I think this is the, the meaning of uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teaching of Trinada Peace Unichina, no? right? Yes. Hmm. The glories of love are unlimited. Even the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna, is taking shelter of love, Sri Mati Radhika. <clears throat> And he is doing so 
to experience what he could never experience before. What is the great greatness of her love? What is the greatness of Radhika's love? Which aspect of myself does she discover in her love to me that even I don't know? Which aspect of myself does she discover in her love to me that even I don't know? <laughs> what happiness does she feel when she realizes the sweetness of my love? What happiness does she feel when she realizes the sweetness of my love? This is how love is the teacher of the Lord and makes him dance in ever fresh dances of love wow so annaka this what you read now as a question to shri krishna let us read this again as a question to myself not to myself as Dora Sundara, I have to read it to me. But every every devotee could read this as a meaning to himself. So I like to read this as a question to, to myself and everybody should think about it that it is a question to himself. Okay? <laughs> Please read. Game. It's only yeah, a let's... game. <laughs> 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 so that means even the Supreme Lord don't know the greatness of her love. And now, but now I, 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 I tell this question to myself and you to you. <laughs> Which aspects of myself does she discover in her love to me that even I don't know? Isn't it beautiful to ask myself this question? Which aspects of myself does she discover Swamini, in her love to me, that even I don't know. I think there is no question that she is full of love to me. Right? Swamini is also full of love to me. Even if I'm not in a deep relationship to her. What happiness does she feel when she realizes the sweetness of my love? This is how love is the teacher of the Lord. And we can also say, this is how love is my teacher. 
and makes me dance in ever fresh dance of love. Because in that moment, I accept her as that what she is. She is a person, person, what has this? Personalisiert? Personified. Personified love. No? Mm. And of course, she, is, she loves me also. And if, in that moment, I go in a relationship to Swamini. Then all these things will be discovered. It's only a, it was only a game to, uh, to speak to myself as a meditation to discover my love to her and experience this, like Krishna do. In the form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Radhe, radhe. So interesting, very interesting, you know, if we think about it, you know, we are thinking only Krishna is thinking like this, but we also thinking. And then, then my answer is like this. Oh, I, I have to run from dearest servant of Radhika. So I have to take shelter. I know I have to know her feeling. I have to follow her footstep. <laughs> and this come from Rupa Nuga. Jai. <laughs> so Mahaprabhu want to teach us <coughs> these things. So I don't know. So I want to share what I, I, I don't know. This is, I don't know. This is good for, for everybody, but I want to share what Guru Dev is sharing to us. So in Brindaban, especially Rashka Vaishnava, among the Vaishnava, Rashka Vaishnava, Raganuga Bhakti means Rupanuga Bhakti. But they don't say Rupanuga Bhakti. Because everybody knows what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu want to give us. Even Rashka Bhasham did not say Manjari Baba. <laughs> Because they know very secret thing. Mm. They don't say anything, but they know everything. <laughs> so Mahaprabhu want to teach us. It's Baba Urasa. Made servant of Radhika's love. Glory of, glory of the Radhika, also glory of Manjari. Mm. But we are, we are foreigner, you know. We don't know anything, you know. So, but the mercy of Guru Dev. So, we are learning slowly, slowly. <laughs> And step by step. Rade, rade. Mm. Rade. So this, this is the first page. These were the words of uh, Guru Dev. Spoken in January 2019 in Vrindavan. 
、うん、俺もスリーアザゴーな。うん。うん。<笑>なお、もう、こう、こう、こう、こう、いや、じゃあ、お前が。OK、we move forward。Introduction。First, love your own self. Written by Tarun Govinda Das. First, we have to love our own self and all there is to it. Many people think that actually in religion we only have to love God and then everything else will follow. It even sometimes <clears throat> Goes so far as that many people neglect the life in the here and now. <coughs> and concentrate on the afterlife. Now, if we really want to experience and live through divine love, we first of all have to love our own self. We have to start right there. Who are we? <coughs> we are eternal spiritual souls. We souls have a subtle and a gross body. <coughs> It is very important <coughs> to find a wonderful balance. Between the life in the body and mind and the spiritual life. At one point, we will not find a difference anymore. All will be spiritual. All will be divine. If we concentrate on one aspect too much or too little, We become unbalanced and we suffer.
Once Srila Rupa Goswami said Jive Daya Nameruchi Vaishnava Sevaya Three things are very important. Jive Daya Mercy to the all living entities. What does this mean? It means that we should see all living beings being parts of the Supreme Whole, Sri Krishna. We should respect every living being and see the Lord residing in each of them. But we first have to be merciful to our own jiva. We have to love ourselves. When we realize ourselves as eternal spiritual souls, we can truly love and appreciate ourselves. We should accept who we are with all the ingredients of our being. We have our material life and needs and we have our spiritual life <clears throat> and needs as well. We have to put emphasis on our spiritual life. And this means that our life here in this world, job, family, friends, should be permitted with our daily sadhana or spiritual practices. I am a teacher in elementary school. If I don't do my sadhana in the early morning hours, my whole day is influenced by the strong waves of the material ocean. My consciousness then is not clear. I don't live in the soul consciousness. When we are clear in mind, we see things as they are. 
and we are in tune with what the universe under the Lord's control has in it for us. Everything, everything will be seen under the light of divine love. If we don't recognize our actual stage of bhakti and we force ourselves to be 100% spiritual in our daily life, This means that we are not honest with ourselves. We have to see where we stand. We have to acknowledge that there are still impurities in our hearts we are in the process. If we are not merciful to our own selves, we then condemn ourselves for the mistakes we are bound to commit. If we constantly feel guilty about ourselves, we will not experience love. When the child falls down, it gets up, moves on. This Kainana, is the what means, what, sorry, guilty, guilty. No? What is meaning of guilty? Guilty, feel very huh? bad. Feel very bad. Oh, <clears throat> I'm so bad. I'm Sina. Yes. Like it's kind of this kind of feeling. Yes. No? So, <clears throat> and still we are on the point of the false ego. Right? Yes. Because this is also explained by Gurudev when he used something like this paper. <laughs> How can be this paper of feeling guilty? It's not possible that uh, this, this cannot make something wrong because it's a material thing and it's not possible that it's making something wrong. So, and for that, there is no meaning of that it can could feel guilty. But we, we feel sometimes guilty. We are identified with this material cross body. But if we check it seriously, we can see that this body is material, right? Yes. It's. And how is this possible that this material can be guilty? For what? <laughs> <laughs> so,
So it's five elements and also the subtle elements, but then we can find, okay, wow, there is the mind. And very close to the mind, there is a small thing that we call false ego. And this false ego makes us thinking that we are a part of matter. And it says, oh, we are guilty because we do this and that. But actually, how is it possible that a matter can do this or that? And Gurudev explained that the only thing what is sinful in our life is to forget the Lord or in our case, our Swamini. And so we forget that we are eternal, that we are not a part of this world. So we, there is no meaning of guilty. The only thing we have to do is to change our identification from material identification of a temporary body, what comes and goes. So, yes. so what to our eternal, <clears throat> right? So. Yeah, I that's I I follow exactly what you're saying. It's it's nice. However, don't you believe that part of this process of transcending this false ego and reaching this prayojan kind of stage of this you know siddha uh, dehi, you know, this isn't isn't part of the process um, acknowledging our position of our past sins, our past transgressions, is because we see in many of the prayers of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, you know, I'm this worthless, you know, he's in this uh, Gopinath, you know, he's saying I have no qualities, I have committed so many sins, all these things. And so isn't it part of the process that we should acknowledge these? And I don't like the word guilty, you know, um, he's using the word guilty here, but there is a difference between guilt and shame. Mm -hmm. You see, shame, yes. shame is like more of a feeling that, oh, you know, I have not, I have not acted nicely. I have uh, committed offenses towards others. Um, guilt is more like a condemnation. It's more of a sentence. Like it, it's something we see something commits, somebody commits a crime and they're, and they're judged and they're found guilty mm -hmm. and they're sentenced <clears throat> and they're punished, you know? Uh -huh. So shame is more of a, of an acknowledgement of, you know, something that's not pure in our past. And I'm just asking if you th agree that maybe this is part of the process, can be part of the process, um, of getting from this material uh, uh, identification with the body and the past and the self and moving towards the transcendental plane. Yes, you are right. You are right. This, um, I mean, this this kind of a, of the right identification as a a follower of Swamini or as an inhabitant of Vrindavan, actually, no? because there are many lines who are uh, uh, teaching uh, this in different ways mm -hmm. to become an inhabitant in Vrindavan, right? And there is a process, what you say. And in between this process, we are still under the control of Mahamaya. Mm -hmm. And But in that moment, we are reach Vrindavan. I mean the true, the real Vrindavan. As an inhabitant of Vrindavan, there is nothing to speak about false ego. Because we are then in the in the right way, and we are hundred percent identified with our spiritual body, 
and uh, th there is no, no more meaning of material uh, sense gratification or false ego or even uh, karmic reactions. As long as we are under the control of Mahamaya, we have to accept this karmic reactions. That means you do something good, you get a good reaction, you do something wrong, you get a bad reaction, right? But in that moment, we switch or we work on it. Then this influence of Mahamaya will go back. And Yoga Maya will take part. And when we are reaching Vrindavan in this way, as an inhabitant of Vrindavan, there is no more meaning of, of karmic reactions, of false identification, of past or future. There is only we are in that moment, we are doing our service, and we are free from all this uh, meaning of uh, what we say. Um, yes, false ego and, and, and this, this reaction from this false ego. And that means we think we are sinner. And so this is finished then. Then we are in our natural, eternal position. So, no? yeah. So, also very good point. Actually, even Siddha, like Ragnadas Goswami or Narottama Das Taku, if they, they are in Sadaka Deha, they are completely humble, completely yes. feel lowest person. Yeah, yeah. So, in that sense, so, like, uh, I, you know, like uh, Siddhanta Maharaj saying is true because uh, feeling is, is very low and sometimes feel, oh, I'm worse, worsest sinner. Sometimes they also feel like this. <laughs> yes, yes. And if some eagerness is coming for this next step that we are yes. entered the uh, Vrindavan, <clears throat> as an inhabitant, there we, we judge ourselves, oh, why I'm not so more eager? Mm -hmm. Why I'm not more humble? <laughs> why I'm this and that? But this is divine. This is different to this material judgment. And we can uh, Think on the on the eagerness in the Siddha Deya, how much eager they are to do their service. These maid servants are so fixed in their service we cannot imagine. We can read by Raghunatas how eager they are, right? Mm. And this is a natural eagerness in the spiritual abode in the Siddha Deya. This is natural. This is their nature. And this is a thing we're missing here a little bit. Because of this, we have to create some eagerness in our heart mm. to come in the connection, to make it more quick. We cannot wait more. But, uh, this is, uh, no, we have only a short lifetime this, in this material world. And we have to need it properly to grow in this, in this uh, spiritual uh, meaning of spiritual body, spiritual relationship, spiritual feelings, exchanging to get a, to become real servant. Like also Mahaprabhu was praying so many times, no? very greedy to go there. And so, but I think this judgment will uh, finish after a, a, a short time. 
what this was your question um, this is in between there is possible that there is a mixture sometimes yoga maya is more uh, prominent sometimes maha maya is more prominent so and and in this time uh, this is the time we 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 get a new life and in between there is some in and on but after a short time this will finish the self judgment yeah I, <clears throat> very nice very nice the way you describe this I'm just, you know, taking the context of this particular um, passage that we're reading, you know, he's saying, first love your own self. And so this is kind of like a, um, kind of like a starting point, you know, so, you know, you're, you're, you're a very elevated, you know, you're in a very elevated bhav, it seems, you know, and that's great. And I admire that. I really respect that. Um, I'm just speaking for myself, you know, that um, I'm always in this balance, in this tension, you know. You know, yeah. On one hand, one hand, you know, trying to be a good devotee, trying to follow all the instruction and be, you know, good sadaka and being loving to all and serving everyone. And still, there's this tension that, yes, but um, really, this, that, the, yeah, yeah, this, 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 this past of this kind of, you know, undesirable qualities, these anarthas, right, so to speak. These mm. things are they're always kind of lingering right and we want to and we and that that's really the impetus that's the stimulus to for the hankering for this pure should you should bhakti status that's a springboard to the spiritual plan you know so yeah. actually this is a helpful because it's reminding us that yeah you're coming from a low position and that's encouraging us that's inspiring us to 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 move beyond that to you know to, to let that go, you know, so that's this whole passage, I think, is dealing with that, to love ourselves. Don't, we don't want to beat ourselves up, but we want to, you know, acknowledge that this is our position and the sincerity he talks about here. We have to be honest with ourselves, you know, and not pretending that we're something that we're not, <laughs> you know, this is, yeah. <laughs> so beautiful, yeah. and we have to understand what is real knowledge. Yeah. My dear, knowledge, uh, <laughs> The spiritual knowledge means feelings, 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 and relationship. Mm -hmm. This is the teaching of all the Mahajans, and this is also the teaching of Mahaprabhu, and especially from Swamini. Mm -hmm. She is the, the, the teacher of feelings, mm -hmm. and she is also the owner or the source of all kinds of feeling, uh, feelings. And this is, this is the meaning of Mahabhav. And love is the, is the what to say, the, the most important feeling that we can get in life. And what you say, we, first we have to love ourselves. <laughs> How can we love others when we don't love ourselves? And if we accept our Swamini, that she loves us also, then it's more easy for us to accept, to love ourselves. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> 